Installing the server operating system for media, so notice we actually start here loading the files. It's going to be from either a physical disk or from an ISO in a virtual environment. And it goes through the process of loading the files that we need to have for our environment. It's basically your preboot your preboot environment for your or your Windows PE environment that you're going to use to load. Now here we got the Windows Server screen comes up and we choose our languages and our keyboard layout. Once we've done that, we're going to click on Next as our option, and we have either Repair Your Computer option or Install Now. You go ahead and click on Install Now to bring up your install screen, and it brings you into the setup is starting, and there's additional files that are being loaded. There is exactly a process that goes on in the background, and it brings us to a Activate Windows screen. We have to put in a product key, so you put in your product key, and when you're done, you click on Next. It'll actually load us to our next screen. And remember, your product key actually has to match the version that you're installing. That's very important. So here we have a couple of versions on our disk, and we would select either a core or GUI. We're going to work with our core for the purpose of our install, but the only difference in the end run is which version we have. So go ahead and click on Next there. We have to accept the license terms. You need to read them and understand them for legal reasons. You make sure you're compliant. Check that and click on Next to go on. And we're not going to do an upgrade. We're actually going to do a custom install from scratch. So we're going to click on the custom install. We can do upgrade, but only if we have a 64-bit to 64-bit. Here we have a help me decide button. It lets us tell you what to choose in terms of your options. You can choose to upgrade if you want to keep your settings and you actually have a compatible OS. Remember, it has to be 64-bit and it has to be available for an upgrade. And I can do a custom install if I want to delete everything or rewrite everything. And if I do an upgrade, I want to make sure I do a few things, like have backups, or if I have drivers I need for like a fingerprint reader or rate card, it's all there. In our case, we're going to do a custom install, so we will go ahead and click on that. And then you have to choose your drive allocation environment. So you can click on either a new partition, or you can just use the whole partition there. So either way you want to go about it, doesn't really matter. So new partition would be one. We also have over to the left, you notice a load driver option, in case we need to put in a hardware RAID. So here we click new. And we click on apply and that will actually create a new partition for us and to ensure that everything is done properly it'll actually add some additional system partitions that we need so you click on ok and once it's finished notice we've got a system reserve partition of 350 megs and then the rest is now our drive zero and we click on next to move on and it will start the process of the installation and we've sped this up uh, dramatically for you and to copies files you know so to go through the Windows installation it's not really this quick in real life you're not going to get this installed in about a minute or two it takes a little bit longer depending on your hardware it could take anywhere from a couple of minutes to somewhere in the vicinity of 15 to 20 minutes for the whole process there is no exact number lots of things come into play obviously if we're installing it on something like a solid state drive will get a little bit faster performance from it but you're still limited on the source file in our case if we sourced it off of DVD we're limited based on how fast the DVD runs if we're if we took it off of a ISO we're based on how fast the ISO can process the information if it's off of a spinning drive it's a spinning drive or a solid state drive it's a solid state drive so we're still limited by the slowest point in our process in other words if we use a DVD, it's going to be slower than if we use a hard disk of some sort, either solid state or a actual spinning disk. And it goes through the process, it'll go through and finish up, and it will reboot the computer. And after it's done rebooting the computer, it will actually run through a few more pieces of our environment. And there we go. Let's notice we've got some spinning icons. It'll start the loading screen process here. And when we start loading up the screen, We'll get a few more spinning icons with our little Windows logo background. It'll get our devices ready. It will process that, and then it will move on to the next phase. The next phase will actually just go and bring us up to our Windows environment, ultimately, which we will then be prompted to create a... Basically, we have to change or set the user administrator password before signing in. This is the local machine user administrator password. So go ahead and click on OK, and we put in a password. And the password needs to be something we have as a secure password. So it needs to be long and strong. And then, so you really want to be at 10 characters or more. But, you know, 8 characters is really kind of the minimum. You change your password. And here it's been changed. So we click on OK. It'll apply our user settings. And remember, this is a core version only. So it's going to bring up just our core version interface, which is just a command prompt. And the other version, it would bring us a full GUI. 
And that's how we get our server environment installed for media. <laughs>